marriage, but I don't think it should happen. I, I think that marriage is the wrong thing to do in life. You don't need a piece of paper to actually show that you truly really love someone. But if that's what you want to do, and you want to donate to the state, it keeps my taxes lower. And I don't mind that. It's some sort of law that smoking cigarettes or drinking beer, whenever they want to increase the revenue in the state of New York, the first thing they'll do, they'll hear beer, wait a minute, beer, cigarettes, and marriage licenses. It's wrong, but hey, what the hell? I do two out of three, so it's going to cost me less. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, what you have just seen on this video was my commentary made April 17, 1993, at my brother Scott's wedding uh, regarding my view on marriage. I guess before this gets out to the general public and back to my wife, I have a little explaining to do for those of you who... Uh, have seen the, the statement. Um, I guess it simply is this. It took the right woman at the right time to change my views on marriage and Ellen is the one. So as I have throughout my life um, admitted uh, my mistakes and, and, and whatnot, I guess in order to satisfy those who may want to bring my commentary up from time to time, I will do here in front of everyone who sees this video the only thing I can do. Um, I will eat crow. Thank you. And good night. Jesus Christ brought blessing to a wedding in Canaan of Galilee, 
With his presence there, and also it was there at the wedding in Cana of Galilee that he began his miracles, and he changed the water to wine. Let us ask his blessing upon this occasion. Would you just join me in a moment of silent prayer, and then I will pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the beautiful day that you've given Jim and Ellen and the family. We thank you for the love that you've given to each one of them toward each other. And we thank you for your love that you have for all human beings. We pray that you'll bless this occasion, that you'll bless this union of Jim and Ellen as they publicly make this declaration to be husband and wife. We pray that they will grow deeper and deeper in love with each other with each day. These things we pray in your loving and tender name. Amen. Now, who gives this woman to be married to this man? We do. We do. Yeah, yeah. All right. You all may sit down. Ellen, you step forward. Okay. Jim, you step over here to her. Okay. <laughs> Jim and Ellen, the scripture tells us concerning responsibilities that husbands have to wives and wives to husbands. For example, we read this. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her, and having cleansed her by the washing of the word, he might present her to himself, a church, in all of her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does, the church. Ellen, in the same manner, you wives, be under the leadership of your own husbands, so that even if they are disobedient to the word, they may be won without the word by the behavior of the wife. Let your husbands observe, your husband observe your respectful behavior. Let not your adornment just be the putting on beautiful dresses and the wearing of gold, jewelry, or the external braiding of the hair, but let it be the hidden person of the heart, that imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, and grant to her honor as a fellow heir the grace of life. To sum it all up, let all be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for this very purpose, that you would inherit a blessing. If you will face each other and hold your hands, I'm going to ask you this question, and you will answer, I will. Will you, Jim Spencer, take Ellen Sim to be your wife? Will you promise to love her, care for her? Keep only to her so long as you both shall live. I will. Will you, Ellen Sin, take Jim Spencer to be your husband? Will you promise to love him, care for him, keep only to him so long as you both shall live? We read in Scripture that the kind of love that's to be developed in your relationship as husband and wife is spoken about this way. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous, it does not brag, it is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take into an account a wrong suffered, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but it rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things. Love never fails. And now you're going to repeat your vows to each other. Jim, beginning with you first, as you look at Ellen, repeat after me. I, Jim, take you, Ellen, to be my wife. I, Jim, take you, Ellen, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold to this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. 
To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. So long as we both shall live. So long as we both shall live. I, Ellen, take you, Jim, to be my husband. I, Ellen, take you, Jim, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day <laughs> forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. So long as we both shall live. We read in the scripture that there was a great flood that covered the whole earth. And this was during the time of Noah. God instructed Noah before that flood to build an ark. And all that were inside the ark were saved from death, from that flood. But after the flood, God made a promise to all human beings that he would never destroy the whole earth with a flood again. And as a token of that promise, he set a rainbow in the heavens. And so each time we see a rainbow, it's there to remind us of this promise that God has made never to destroy the whole earth with a flood again. We learn from this that when we enter into solemn agreement, such as your marriage vows are, that it's right and it's fitting to have a token of those vows. You have chosen these rings as a token of your marriage vows. And how fitting it is that you've done so, you notice that they are a precious metal. And as this precious metal increases with value with each passing day, so let your love for each other increase with value with each passing day. You notice that they are a circle without beginning and without end, except when broken by some outside force. Let these rings be a reminder to you to continue in your marriage until broken by death alone. Jim, you will take this ring and place it on her ring finger and repeat after me. I'll let you get it on. There you go. <laughs> Ellen, receive this ring. Ellen, receive this ring. As a symbol of my love to you. As a symbol of my love to you. And as a token of the promises I make to you. As a token of the promises I make to you. Now, let me place this on his ring finger. Jim, receive this ring Jim, receive this as a symbol of my love to you and as a token of the promises I make to you. Insomuch as you have made these promises before God, before these witnesses, and you have sealed the same by the giving and receiving of these rings, I, Ron Freilich, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and legally authorized by the state of New York, do pronounce that you are husband and wife, who therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. You may kiss your wife. All right, now, if we'll all stand, I will introduce to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. James Spencer. Before you go down the aisle, shall we pray? I'd like to have a word of benediction. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the loving name of his Son, the Prince of Peace. Amen. You can go down the aisle if you want to. <laughs> And you all may follow if you want to. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Yeah, if they want to have their first dance, they can. That's okay. Well, I don't know about that. Very good, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. I mean, I know it's quite a jump to come here. Yeah, it's quite a drive. Are you going back up to the, going up to the camp or back to? Uh, we're going to take a ride up to the camp first, but okay. then we're going right back. All right. Well, if I can have two witnesses.
Hey. 